Okay, thank you. So good morning, everyone. So my name is Min Sik Cho from IBM, and today I'm going to talk about how to decompose or reduce for deep learning on heterogeneous neural hierarchy. So this is a joint with the doctors Uli Finkler, David Kung, uh, Hillary Hunter, all from IBM. So we love large-scale deep learning because that's the way to speed up training. Once we can speed up training, there are many good things, right? We can explore different architectures, so we can try different, different hyperbolic tuning, so there are many good things. So, for example, if there is a job which may take nine days on a single GPU, as long as you know how to do large batch size and hyperbolic tuning, it's possible that we can finish the same training task in an hour, like uh, with uh, many GPUs, right? But the problem I see here is that we love large-scale deep learning, but there is obviously a bottleneck coming up in the future. So if we take a look at technology advancements in the last three years from 2015 to 2019, think about like a technology from M company. So they increased the bandwidth by 2x over three years for single port. But if you think of let's say, the technology from N company, they were able to um, increase, uh, let's say, the props by x times um, if we want to use like F16. So in last three years, competition is um, is, in, is uh, getting better very fast. But meanwhile, network bandwidth, network bandwidth is, not, is not catching up. And actually, this is a new. I mean, we have uh, seen this trend in microarchitecture for last multiple decades, and then the same thing is going to happen to large scale deep learning as well. So this really motivates why we need to have a better algorithm for communication and the infrastructure. So thanks to previous two talks, I don't think I need to spend that much time on this slide. So if we want to do large scale deep learning, there are a few ways. The first thing is the model level parallelism. So we will partition the models and then each piece will go to different devices to speed up the training itself. Or we can use like a large batch size to enable data level parallelism. I mean, one obvious approach is, as in the previous two talks, somebody can use a parameter server. But these days, actually, uh, we are more interested in like a data parallelism based on all these technology. Actually, all reduce is not a new technology. I mean, this is a concept that has been there for two decades in HPC community. But for your background, I mean, this is like kind of what I say, um, the picture I copied from mpitutorial.com. So this is like a tutorial level stuff. So what it does is that every learner will have, uh, let's say, the number array. And then this all reduce operation will add them numbers, like element by element, and then share the final result across all the learners in the picture. So this is a very natural mapping to stochastic gradient descent, right? Every learner will generate local gradient, and then we want to do all reduce over those local gradients so that everybody can have a graded, um, global gradient um, for the parameter update, right? So obviously, this has been already like discussed in prior art. I mean, Baidu started using this technology in deep learning around like February 2017, uh, and then this is their animation. So let me like, go through these steps. So I have a five GPUs here, and then I want to do all reduce. So typical technology to do all reduce is having reduce scatter followed by all gather. So here I have a five GPUs. That's the reason why um, um, each number array, I mean, in this case, this is a gradient. Uh, each gradient array is partitioned into five pieces. Then now I'm going to uh, propagate those numbers through the neighbors so that I can have uh, um, final sum um, at the end of the scatter. First, uh, first, you can see that. You can follow like the boxes. Now I have like an intermediate sum here, then in the next cycle, I'm going to send my reader um, to the, my neighbor again, and again, and again. So after five cycles, um, everybody will have a one piece of the final result. And then this is, uh, this is like a result from like a reduced scatter. So this is why this is called a reduced scatter, because the result is reduced, but it is scattered. So next step here is now we want to do all gather. So all gather is simply a broadcasting step. So now I have a final result, but this is only partial result. So I want to broadcast my result across all the runners in the picture to get the all results done. So now I have a global gradient, so I'm ready to do parameter update. This ring-based algorithm has been already discussed in HPC community around like 2005. You can, you can easily like Google, Google the paper. 
this is a bandwidth optimal algorithm. So you cannot do any better. Only if you have a uniform bandwidth distribution. Everybody has the same bandwidth everywhere, then this is a king. But the problem here is that once you start having some kind of, let's say, that poor bandwidth somewhere in the system, that will be your bottleneck because everybody needs to wait for the data to be transferred over the slow link. That's the problem. So somewhere, some, sometimes, your bandwidth will be underutilized. And then remember that to enable these steps, I need to do like 10 steps from five from the reduce scatter, five from the old gather to complete all reduce when I have a five GPUs. But imagine that you have like 1,000 GPUs or 10,000 GPUs, then easily your latency will be add up. The another key problem in this algorithm is that it has a linear dependency in terms of number of GPUs um, for latency. So if you have many GPUs, the latency will be your problem. Obviously, we are smart, so, so people have been thinking about how to address this latency problem. So last year, around the July, Tencent um, proposed this idea for their experiments. So their idea is that I have many boxes, and then I'm going to pick mass GPU per box. And the first step is I'm going to reduce my gradient to the master guy, and the master guy will, re will perform reduce among master guys only. Then I will share my result back to the old, old my friends in the same boxes. So this is an obvious approach, but you can see that still this is kind of what I said, a linear flavor kind of algorithm. So in fact, Horrible has uh, exactly the same implementation in their source code um, around, let's uh, say, October 2018. So what it shows here is that, um, so, so it would do reduce scatter, then reduce to the master, and then it would do MPA all reduce to all reduce across the masters, then all gather, and then broadcast. What I'm going to show you in Blue Connect is that actually this is not optimal traffic pattern. We can do better than this. So essentially, I'm going to say that Actually, we don't need to have uh, those two steps, which is as expensive as other steps in this flow. The so problem with this approach is that, first of all, if we, if we, even though you can like, reduce the number of the steps by four, still that's a linear complexity, and then traffic pattern is not optimal, and then you spend multi-thousand dollars on GPUs, but in this picture, only master GPU will be active at a moment, so which is like, kind of like uh, uh, wasting money. Sony 2018, around November, proposed like a different kind of all reduce. I name it as a torus reduce, torus all reduce, because this is based on like a torus architecture. So what they have done here is that they did a reduce getter, and then all reduce, and then all getter, and then that's the end of um, uh, all reduce operation. Um, you will realize that actually this is a kind of like similar to what I'm going to propose here, but in fact, the Blue Connect is a kind of a generalization scheme of the this Sony uh, approach. And then I can claim that we had this idea long time before like, Sony came up with this idea because we already have a patent around the 2017 June time frame. So what I'm going to propose here is that this is a different way of doing all reduce based on like, a decomposition. So before getting into like, the details, the benefit from decomposing all reduce into multiple pieces is that is easier uh, to map your operation to different network fabrics, and then this will enable us to explore like a various trade-off between latency and bandwidth, and then and then from the like engineering perspective, we can do mix and match uh, various algorithms and implementations from different vendors. So let me show you like what is the trick here. So already it is known that all reduce can be done by calling reduce scatter and all gather, but what is not known so far is that if the total number of all the, all the runners can form some kind of hypercube. Actually, we can further decompose, reduce scatter, and all gather into multi stages and then parallelizable reduce scatters and then all gather operations. So there is some kind of like a graphic theory behind this, but I will skip that about it. So I have a concrete example on how it works. So let's take a look at here. So let's say that I have a hypothetical, let's say the cloud environment where I have only four machines, and each machine has a different colors, and each machine has now three GPUs, and then those GPUs are kind of like linked to the, let's say, the Pixar Express, which is kind of a high bandwidth, 
and then two machines are at like in the single rack, and then I have a one direct switch. So this is kind of like a three-level network hierarchy, and then let's assume that each level has a very different kind of a band network bandwidth. So now, because I have a, in total 12 GPUs, I can think of various hypercubes, right? So I can have like a 12 by one, which is kind of a one-dimensional hypercube, which is kind of like a ring, right, in this case. And then if I, if I make a day choice, the total latency is a 24 because there are 12 GPUs. But if I can think of, let's say, different hypercube setting, like a two by six, four by three, or by three by two by two, as long as it is factorizable, you can think of a various kind of hypercubes. And then they do have a different latency. And then they do have a different chemi chemistry to your, your network in, uh, infrastructure. So in this case, my obvious choice is that, okay, this is uh, my best method like uh, chemistry to the network, network topology, because this is how I can avoid using poor bandwidth as late as possible. So key idea is that I want to do as many operations as possible with a higher bandwidth first before touching up any, let's say, the poor bandwidth up in the, uh, up in the high, high, higher level in the network architecture. So because I decide to have, uh, let's say, the three, um, three uh, level on uh, three dimensional hypercube, I have uh, three steps for reduced scatters, and then I have uh, three steps for the uh, all, all gather. You can see that they are symmetric. And then at each stage of a reduced scatter and all gathers, I'm going to have a uh, multiple uh, rings. And then size of a ring um, is based on like a dimension of that hypercube. So now you can see that I'm trying to use my neighbor GPUs first before touching up any like a remote GPUs to utilize like a higher bandwidth better to avoid having bottleneck uh, from the poor bandwidth during the ring operation. So this is like a topology of where all is decomposition. So now let me show you like what is going to happen um, inside this um, uh, algorithm. So now I have, let's say, that like 12 GPUs here, and then in the first dimension, I'm going to have, let's say, the four uh, independent like uh, reduced scale operations in parallel. So here, because everybody knows only, let's say, the two other neighbors, the partition size is four, then I'm going to call, let's say, the reduced scatter um, to finish like a reduced scatter on all the machines. Then now I'm going to um, take, uh, um, change the direction, and then we look at like, uh, my neighbor under the same rack, and then we'll do the let's say, the reduced scatter again. So in this case, the actual, let's say, the communication volume is half, because I have already done some work in the first step, and then I will just talk to my neighbor in the same rack. And then here, I'm going to run like a six concurrent like reduced scatters. In the last step, now the data volume is like a now one, and then I have a two neighbors, and then I'm going to now talk to my neighbor across the rack uh, to, to minimize the impact from the poor bandwidth. So if I continue doing this, at the end of the day, I will have a reduced scatter done in this way, and then for all gather, I can take the exactly the same step in a reverse order to finish the, uh, the all reduced operation. So this is a kind of like a, a big picture from one step um, um, back. So I decompose, let's say, the single or reduced operation into multiple uh, multi-stages and then parallelizable uh, reduced scatter and all get operations. And then because they are like independent reduced scatter operations, it is possible to use uh, different implementations, different algorithms from different vendors. For example, I can use, like, let's say, the tree-based algorithm if that works for me. But in the second stage, I can use, let's say, the library from Mellanox because that's like the best, best library from vendor. So at the end of the day, I can do mix and match to deliver the best end-to-end -end performance based on variable options. So this is kind of what I said, the mix, mix and match to, de to deliver the best performance. So this is a result. So we, try, we compared this like all use operation against, uh, let's say, the Nico 2.3 on two different platforms. So this is uh, like uh, IBM Power Systems. So you may know that IBM um, is a kind of a normal machine. So between GPUs, they already have a network hierarchy. So even though I have, what I say, the all use within box, because this algorithm knows how to take advantage of in-system topology, we can deliver much, much better throughput than Nico. If we cross the boxes, then obviously there is like already network hierarchy again, and then we can deliver better performance than uh, NICO 2.3. So in this case, I use like uh, two IBM systems and then uh, 10 gigabyte per second uh, infinite band. Then what about x86? Because 
x86 doesn't have a hierarchy because this is a kind of a symmetric PCI Express tree. So in this case, we don't have any advantage because um, there is no network hierarchy. But as soon as you leave the systems and then heating up the, let's say, the network bottleneck, then it can perform better than um, Nico. So in this case, I use like a two x86 SAMs with a P100, and then the connection is a 10 gigabit um, Ethernet. So this is like a grand scale experiment I have done. So I was able to secure like a 48 IBM um, P9 systems, and the, the configuration is that I have a 16 machines per rack, and then I have a three racks, and then they are hooked through the right director switch. So when I integrated Blue Connect into Cafe 2, I was able to compare against like, different implementations uh, based, on, based on like a data parallelism for all reduce. So I compared it with MPI all reduce and then Glue from Facebook, which is based on Nico and then IP Bird, and then Blue Connect algorithm. So now you can see that uh, Blue Connect delivers like a best scalability across a, a different kind of uh, different different let's say the level of hierarchy that with a different number of GPUs. So this shows that um, if we know, if we understand cluster, and then if we know how to decompose the all reduce into different hypercubes, there is a way to make uh, our all reduce group better. So this is a kind of what I say, the final summary slide. So MPI, I mean, typical, let's say the ring-based all reduce algorithm is kind of universal, and then it works for all the cases, which is good. But the problem is that once you have a network hierarchy, once you have a different bandwidth at different level of your infrastructure, then it will be throttled by the worst case bandwidth, which is not good. But in Blue Connect, Blue Connect cannot avoid that worst case bandwidth. But the trick here is that we will try to use like higher bandwidth as much as possible, and that we'll do as much as what we can do before hitting that like worst case bandwidth to minimize the impact. In terms of latency, uh, ring algorithm has a linear complexity. So think of, let's say, that 20, 27,000 GPUs from the summit computer. If we want to do ring-based or reduce, this will take a very long time because uh, you will get suffocated by the like, very high latency overhead. But in blue connected case, you have a choices now. You can try different decompositions to find a good balance between bandwidth utilization and the latency overhead. Um, so, Blue Connect provides a kind of, let's say, that user um, controlled knob to, um, to play the like, trade between bandwidth and then, um, uh, latency overhead. But there is obvious limitations. The first limitation is that you have to understand your system architecture. That's the first thing. Otherwise, you cannot build your hyper cube. Second thing is that this is applicable if the number of GPU is factorizable. For example, I have uh, 17 GPUs, which is a prime number. Then this is not going to work, obviously. And then another like, uh, limitation here is that now I have a multiple independent steps and then can use a different uh, vendor libraries, but that means that I need, I need to do some kind of a context switching, which will uh, have uh, some kind of impact in terms of like, implementation efficiency. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, do we have any questions? Again, please uh, line up at the mics if you do. I think uh, I should give incentives for asking questions like candy or something, because it really is helpful when you, when you do that. Um, so let me, let me kick things off. So you, uh, Vincent, you mentioned um, the, uh, so you're commenting on how you can improve things by making it more of a hierarchical approach, right? Yeah. So in the limit, that could look like a tree which wouldn't be linear, right? That would be like a logarithmic thing. Are you saying that in practice, because these hierarchies and these trees are very flat, it effectively is like a linear thing? So, so first of all, this is not tree, because uh, you can see that as it goes up, the partition size is uh, smaller. Okay. So that's a like, very key, key difference from tree, right? In tree, everything is the same size at every level. But here, the size is getting smaller. That was like my first answer to your question. What was the second thing? No, that's fine. I just was okay. wondering how, why, yeah, why you were referring to yeah. that as yeah. a ver a still a very linear approach. Yeah. So I see you're saying that in a tree-based approach, as you go up, it's still a constant amount or the same amount at every level, yeah. and here it's reducing. Of course, I mean, total information uh, we exchange across the network doesn't change because that's uh, like a minimum thing we need to do. Uh, we need to do for all reduce. But here it is uh, like a volume is smaller, and then we increase the number of connections across the network switch to really like uh, fill up the bandwidth. 
Okay, there's a question over there. Hi, my name is Priya, I have a question. Uh, so in a heterogeneous system, would BlueConnect try out different uh, configurations and figure out the optimal? Or does the user have to do that? So the so question is that uh, whether we will try out different configurations for a given system, is that the question? Yes. So the catch here is that, I mean, for example, I need to know my system beforehand, and then I need to try like a different configurations and then bend the libraries to get the best performance. And then that was like a given uh, before actual training is done. So yes, uh, we need to understand systems, and then we need to find out like a best configuration beforehand, uh, before starting the actual training job. By we, you mean like Blue Connect will figure this out, or? Like yeah, no, uh, we have, I mean, in, in practice, we have uh, some kind of, what I say, the test, like a binary, to try out different configurations, and then through the process, we will find out the best configuration in a try and error manner. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Oh, I had one last question. Yeah. This, this prime number issue, is that really a big deal? Can you just ignore some of the GPUs and? and do the work on the rest of them so it's not a prime number? Well, actually, this is a big deal because uh, once I cannot build the hypercube, I mean, everything will break. So we are working on different kind of algorithm, which is kind of generalized approach of this thing. But for now, in, in current Blue Connect, the factorization is like a minimum requirement. Okay, let's thank the speaker one more time.